What's up, everyone? This is my newest project, Deluxe Reverb Reissue. And this is the Deluxe Reverb Reissue that I had. If any of you Instagram followers of mine noticed that I was looking to sell it, possibly. I ultimately decided to not sell it, only because I thought this amp was great, sounded good. But there were some weird things about it that I was totally uncomfortable selling if it was if I was uncomfortable using it or, you know, if there were some things that I was aware about, I didn't want to sell it. I don't sell things often and I definitely did not want to have a bad reputation because I sold something that stopped working like three months down the road. Those tube sockets were all worn out. This was a guitar center used to purchase and there, it was just, it looks like it was gone through the tone stack on the normal channel was changed and it just made me uncomfortable. So ultimately, I didn't sell it. But what I am going to do is rebuild it. Some of the things I didn't like about the tone of this amp, and this kind of resonates with a few different folks, is the metal polypropylene uh, capacitors, bypa um, coupling capacitors. So, Orange Drop Polyester. The original amps from 1965, the blackface amps, use those blue um, capacitors. Those are polyester. Same th material that the Sprague orange drops are made out of. Not all orange drops. You have to get the specific series. So 6PS is a very safe series. And also the 225, which is a little bit lower voltage. But anyway... Um, so I'm going to, I thought about replacing just those coupling capacitors. I thought this amp was a little harsh to my ears and I added a, um, it's a Weber, but a JBL D120 style speaker and with the aluminum dome. So that was even more bright. And if I, I've been listening a lot to Dead and Company this last fall fun run, and his tone is definitely not bright at all, even when he had the three deluxes. So there's no chance that that fibroverb was, at, you know, the main tone or whatever. In that series, it, it just the amp sounded so good. And yeah, the, the sound guy could, the you know, front of house could be manipulating some of that tone. Sure. But I also know that there's a bunch of guys online that swear by that speaker and swear by this amp, or at least the original deluxe reverb. Uh, 65 or the hand wired so I am really anxious to rebuild this one if you notice there's some influences or if you ever seen the inside of an Alessandro rebuild he eliminates a doghouse and puts all the capacitors inside the way to achieve that is only by adding this one capacitor so in the front end of the filtering uh, there is a reservoir of two capacitors together. You combine those two capacitors into one capacitance. Uh, F and T I'm going to go with because the size is just right for these boards. And because when I redid the power supply on this, you'll notice that I had to add a gap. There's a gap between the chassis and the doghouse. And that's so the, I get some clearance with those um, pretty tall capacitors. But moving them inside will do a few things. It will hopefully make things quieter and it just will eliminate the doghouse from being outside, a little cleaner. Everything's inside. Stuff I'm used to when I built my dumbbells. Another thing that um, I am going to do... Oh, so by the way, I already have my boards made. Oop, flip it over. This is from Hoffman. Not sponsored by him at all. I get no discounts. But look at this board. The thickness is amazing. I'm always so confident. It does not wobble at all. Um, I was going to go with a Mojo Tone, but I kept on reading reports that those boards are almost too vintage in a way that if you add, if you poked it with a multimeter, you're going to basically see some voltage if it's a really humid day. And that's not good because A, that's, that's kind of, can be dangerous to your amp and yourself. And B, that's going to add a lot of noise. So I decided to go this route. I'm going to source all my components myself. And that's, to me, my favorite part is sourcing components. I have some new old stock uh, polyester. You're going to notice uh, that I already did the indicator 
for where the outside foil is. I'm on the fence about using my new old stock uh, bypass filter capacitors. These are Sprague, USA made. I don't think I'm going to end up using that because FNT makes this really cool capacitor for basically it's designed for uh, reissues or not reissues, but you know, Fender from back in the day because they're 25 microfarad, 25 volts, but it's one physical capacitor that takes both of these individual capacitors and combines them into one. It's going to be super clean. You can see I started working on that layout. But here is the layout that I've actually been working on. And this was from Rob Robinette, so thank you, Rob. One thing I haven't done yet is move the doghouse over to the side, but all the preamp and all the connections is where I've been focusing. Um, you're going to see that the capacitors are still the yellow mustard type. That will be changed out shortly. I am going to provide this layout on my GitHub, so so definitely um, follow that or look at my blog, thetonegeek.com, or I'll have a link in the description of this video once that uh, GitHub repository is up. So you can download this layout yourself, manipulate it if you want, and you can also have Hoffman uh, fabricate that exact board for you. So I would definitely recommend this. If anyone's going to get their feet wet into amp building, go for this one first. You can get a Deluxe Reverb uh, reissue pretty cheap at Guitar Center. I think I paid like 650 bucks for this one. And then coming up, uh, here's a pro tip that they are going to have, or at least they did last year, uh, financing on their used gear. So I was able to you know, distribute this over 36 months or something silly. Uh, but anyway, another thing that I'm, another approach, this design that I've learned from my Dumbles, and also I've been doing a ton of research on this amp, or at least the circuit, and how Jerry Garcia and Alembic, uh, you know, basically improved the stability of this amp, because I'm not too, which is kind of funny, because Dumble based his designs off of this, the AB6763, uh, but I'm going backwards because I'm doing this one almost last, which is kind of cool because now I know the Dumble improvements and now I can apply those Dumble improvements but know where the key sections are for the, quote, improvements for this Fender. And one of the Alembic, Jerry Garcia, and the Dumble thing is to add uh, really quiet load resistors here. So I'm going to do metal film. See all these dark brown? Those are going to be metal film, military grade, uh, very stable RN70s or RN65 series capacitor, Dale capacitors, or sorry, resistors. Um, another thing I'm going to do is, you see these purple things, those are mods that I'm going to do for adding reverb to the uh, normal channel. So normally there's no reverb on the normal channel, which is kind of funny, just a vibrato. Um, one last thing I'm going to do on the normal channel is change a tone stack not going to do a Dumble tone stack, but I am going to do a dual professional, Fender dual professional tone stack. I really love my dual professional. I think it's amazing. Um, one, probably one of my favorites. But uh, I'm going to add that tone stack here, keeping the Fender thing. You're going to also notice that there's two inputs here, a high and a low. I'm going to replace that low input with a mid pot. So now I'm going to have mid pots. Uh, Cesar Diaz, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan's tech, or who helped uh, modify his vibro verb, took these 68K, so he used two 68Ks, and then added them to 100K. Some folks say that the high is too you know, bright uh, of an input or too hot of an input, and then the low is too low of an input. That would be a good compromise between the two. So I'm not going to do that initially, but I am going to do that eventually. One uh, other thing that I'm pretty excited about is looking at the Alembic Jerry Garcia mods is they took the preamp out of this uh, blackface and then ran it to a Macintosh 2300, you know, power amp. So basically took the preamp, eliminated the power amp section, and then ran it through a, a very high-powered, basically taking that circuit, making it a very clean output for the big wall of sound and everything like that. So my I'm going to add that same exact preamp. What's going to do is tap into the signal of the preamp with the reverb and then ground out the power section. So this speaker that's in the Deluxe Reverb is no longer going to function if you have, and I, ha I don't have an illustration of it, 
if you have a basically preamp out here. And I'm going to run that preamp out into the power amp in of my steel string singers. That's going to be really cool because now I can, can kind of, and it's not going to be exact like a Fender Twin, but I'm going to have the, the power uh, of that steel string singer, but with the front end of the deluxe reverb. Pretty cool. I'm going to try to keep this video short and sweet. Uh, please follow me. I'm going to do some more constant updates for you guys. Uh, one last thing is I'm going to add um, basically a bias taps here so you can do quick bias because there is no such thing even on the reissue. So hope all is well and we'll catch up soon.